Hey, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, pretty exciting video today. We've got another member of the VC on board. Rich, do you want to say hi? Hey, folks, how you doing? Glad to be here with Tom. He asked me to come on and do uh, a, a collaboration video with him for 1970 albums. More than happy to do so. Happy you invited me. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was thinking about what kind of video we could do together. And um, I know uh, there's a lot of writing about 1971 as a year. Um, and I felt like 1970 kind of lives in its shadow a little bit. And I thought we could put that right a little bit today. <laughs> I agree so, 100%, yep. Yeah, so a big year for music really. Um, the Beatles broke up obviously. And um, you know, if you're a Beatles fan, you're a bit sport for choice because I'm not sure if Ringo released an album this year, but I know that McCartney, Harrison and Lennon all released solo albums and you got Let It Be as well, obviously. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's just a great year overall. So many classic albums, and we're going to count down our top 10. So I guess I'll go first. Uh, go we'll sort of go one piece. Sure. I'm going to start with, it was really tough to make this list, honestly. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, i got three albums I'll talk about at the end that just missed. Um, okay. But my number 10 is going to be an album that I don't think you're going to have, which is okay. The Velvet Underground with Loaded which is their sort of most pop centric album um sort of very beatles inspired you could say not as experimental as some of their other stuff so um yeah it's a great album uh who loves the sun is on there sweet jane some really great songs and it was between this and two other albums and i was really fighting with myself what would get the 10 spot but i've gone for loaded by the velvet underground i'd recommend it if you haven't heard it it's a really good sort of sunshine pop album yeah I do need to add that to my collection. In fact, that album came up in another discussion I was having on a different video. Uh, I, I love the song Sweet Jane. That's really the only one I'm familiar with from that album. Mm. And I think it's fantastic. I, I do own the uh, Velvet Underground and Nico album, which is tremendous too, from 67. So I do need to definitely look into getting that loaded album for sure. Mm. My number 10 is... Joni Mitchell's Ooh. Ladies of the Canyon. Yeah. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with my taste in music, I tend, especially at this time, to go for the singer-songwriters as opposed to the hard rock bands. Uh, this is right up my alley, of course. Joni, it's her third album, I believe. Laurel Canyon's all over it. She's writing about uh, her neighbors in the canyon, her lover at the time, which is Graham Nash uh fantastic arrangement of songs here just right between that folk a little bit of jazz thrown in not as much as she would get into later of course but you've got uh I, the first three songs I, I think are fantastic morning morgantown uh for free and conversation they're all real acoustic driven songs there's a song called willie which is the nickname of graham nash she writes about him here Big Yellow Taxi, which is a moderate hit. Mm -hmm. Woodstock, which she wrote later. Uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young had the big hit with it. And then she ends it with The Circle Game, which is a cool oh, uh, song about life and the different, uh, you know, you use the merry-go-round and uh, dragonflies and all kinds of little metaphors in there and stuff. It's, it's fantastic. So Ladies of the Canyon, my, my number 10. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to complain about some Joni Mitchell. She just missed my list this year. Is that, that right? The ones that yeah. just missed. Um, but, you know, you're right. Big Yellow Taxi, The Circle Game, some of the best songs on that album. Um, mm -hmm. And I should I should point out as well, I meant to say this at the start of the video, Rich opted to go with only albums in his collection. Am I right in saying that? I did. I only took albums that I own, uh, either CD. I have eight on vinyl, two on CD. Um, I can mention honorable mentions at the end if you want to talk about three that just missed. Maybe I do or don't own them, but... Yeah, that, that's fine. But I went with albums that I do own. Yeah. So whereas my collection is, I've only started collecting a few years ago. So yeah, only, my, only my top three are going to be on vinyl. Okay. I've got them here ready for you later. So <laughs> okay. um, my number nine is going to be a bit more of a conventional choice. And I think a lot of people would have it near the top. It's Led Zeppelin three. Um, just so good. The folkiness of it, you know, songs like Tangerine and That's the Way kind of, a bit removed from what they were doing on the first two albums. I like the first two albums, but this is where Led Zeppelin really starts to kick in for me. Um, 
obviously immigrant song is as hard rocking as you're going to get in this period um mm. just absolutely fantastic front to back it's probably my third favorite led zeppelin album i think i like four and houses of the holy a bit more but um i think three is fantastic and i, I should own it really but um you know i will eventually um <laughs> but i think as as a track list goes it's just so solid um yeah just some great songs on there i think tangerine might be my favorite um Oh, and, and uh, Gallows Pole as well. I love that song. So, oh, yeah. number nine is going to be Led Zeppelin 3. I do own it, but I, it didn't make my list. It just missed the cut. So, mm-hmm. um, number nine for me is Elton John's Tumbleweed Connection. Well, that would make it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> another one of, uh, you know, Elton, right in his sweet spot. I mean, he, he was on fire in the early 70s and could do no wrong. And of course, this album is no exception. Uh, more Americana, more uh, rootsy, I'd say, uh, about the, the Old West and things like that, some of the themes he's using. I love the song Com- Country Comfort, uh, Amorina, Burn Down the Mission. They're all solid Elton John songs. There's a song called Love Song, which he did not write, written by uh, Leslie Duncan, a female artist, but he does a fantastic uh, job on it. I, I mean, it's real soft and sweet. Come Down in Time is another song I like. It's just uh, pure 70s Elton John. Uh, before he was really famous, there's not really a hit record on here per se, like there would be in Mad Men or Yellow Brook Road or some of the albums to follow, but I like it nonetheless. Uh, again, it's his third album. So Joni and Elton, I picked both their third albums for some reason yeah. to make my list. And, and people start you know, getting underway with their careers at that point, and it, some of their best material comes out by the third album. I, I feel. Well, I went with Led Zeppelin three, so I'm right there with exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> <We're all fired, laughs> um, no, but Amarina and Burn Down the Mission, especially, I really like those songs. So it's a really good pick. I can't. The thing is, with 1970, you got to try really hard to get a, a bad album in there. Like, there's so much choice. I could have made a top 50. You know, there's so many great albums. Oh yeah, we're going to leave off as many good albums as we put on. That's, that's exactly. Awesome. Yeah. So number eight for me was a bit of a surprise because this is an album that I've only heard for the first time in full in the last week in preparation wow. for this video because there are a few albums I thought, oh, I should probably listen to that. And it is Sunflower by the Beach Boys. Um, oh, it is just absolutely brilliant. That It's them at their most sort of singer songwritery. Dennis Wilson really comes to the forefront on this album. He's got the song Forever, which is his signature song, really. It's absolutely gorgeous, that song. All I Want to Do sounds so ahead of its time. Tears in the Morning is really cool. Um, just brilliant uh, pop. And I think it kind of goes a bit overlooked because people sort of think, you know, Pet Sounds and then Brian Wilson kind of, his mental state kind of deteriorated a lot after then, obviously. But he had a real streak in the early 70s where he was sort of, his head was back in it and he was making some of the most lush, gorgeous pop music you're going to hear. So... And, and again, the lyrics, some of their best lyrics, um, I, I think especially Forever is a, just a heartbreaking song. So, um, yeah, that's my number eight. That's one I need to get because uh, the Beach Boys, I think I only have Pet Sounds and about three or four different compilations of their greatest hits. I never think of them as an album band, although they are. I just, they well, have so many really albums, it's hard to collect them all, <laughs> you know, so. That's, I've heard a lot of good things about Sunflower, so I should check yeah. it out. It's great. My number eight is, you mentioned it earlier, The Beatles' Let It Be, the last uh, album of theirs. Uh, this has gotten a resurgence, of course, since the documentary for me. I never would have placed it on here had, had I done this a year ago. But seeing them work on it in the studio and see, watching these songs come together so to speak, with uh, them, you know, ironing out the, you know, the, the songwriting and the construction of them, it really impressed me, especially Paul McCartney. I thought he was the one that was trying to reel everybody in and turn this into something where the other guys were kind of spaced out or fragmented and looking to do other things. But I, I really enjoy this album now. Of course, the title track is iconic. Uh, songs like the two of us and I've got a feeling across the universe get back of course fantastic it was a single uh, the long and winding road which sort of is a swan song type of thing you know uh fantastic I really uh, enjoy this album so 
I wanted to put it on the list somewhere and mm -hmm. it falls at number eight. I mean, uh, to anyone who hasn't watched Rich and Sam St. John's series going through all the Beatles albums, I'd recommend you, um, I'll leave Rich's link in the description. Um, I'd recommend you go watch them. There's really good stuff um, going Thanks. through all that and, and Past good. Masters as well. So, yeah. Cool. Um, but I'm sure all of you have, because it's great, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at number seven, um, I'm going to go with uh, a band where, for a lot of people, this is their best album. For me, it's almost there, but not quite. It's CCR, Credence Clearwater Revival, with Cosmos Factory. Oh, what a great album this is. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Ramble Tamble, you know, is, is a great deep cut that I absolutely love. But then you look at all the singles on this album, Looking Out My Back Door, Who'll Stop the Rain, um, Run Through the Jungle, Up Around the Bend, just unbelievable um, that they managed to put this album together, especially since, you know, this is considered one of their longer albums. And it's only in at 40 minutes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy. Yeah. The, the famous I Heard It Through the Grapevine cover. Um, the reason I love CCR, um, and I think the reason that falls out of the top five for me is there are a couple sort of fillery tracks, which you don't really get on the other CCR albums because they're so sort of tight and... and Compact, actually. yeah. But I think this one has a few tracks that I kind of, mm, like Ubi Doobie, it doesn't really do much for me, um, you know. But I think for me, my favourite CCR album is Willie and the Poor Boys. But I love Green River and I love Cosmos Factory and yeah. you can't really go wrong. I mean, the album cover alone is so iconic, you know. Yeah. Uh, John Fogarty is somehow fall I think people recognize how good he is as a songwriter but I think he's sort of fallen underrated as a singer and as a guitarist as a guitarist like, yeah. Yeah. Whew, just unbelievable the power in his voice and some of the licks on this album and the riffs are so memorable especially Ramble Tamble for me is a real highlight on the album the technical playing on that song is just whew, it's out of this world um I absolutely love the album if you can't tell already so that's my number seven <laughs> I'm glad you have it because I have it too, a little bit higher up on my. Uh, we match up on one at least. <laughs> <laughs> my number seven is Neil Young, After the Gold Rush, another one that fits the kind of music I like, a singer songwriter, you know, coming off of Buffalo Springfield, uh, on or about the same time he would join Crosby, Stills, and Nash for their Deja Vu album, all within the same year here. Uh, just in incredible. His voice is an acquired taste, I guess. It's that high pitch kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It's very, I like it, but I mean, some people are turned off by it. It's a little, it's a little too unorthodox uh, to say the least, but I, you have I, songs on here, like uh, the title track after the gold rush, which is a interesting song uh, summing up really that generation uh, Only Love Can Break Your Heart, a nice ballad, an acoustic Southern Man, which is a rocking tune, uh, FM staple. Uh, what else is on here? Uh, do, 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 do. I have my glasses on, I'd be able to see, but <laughs> Till the Morning Comes, uh, Don't Let It Bring You Down is a nice tune. Uh, I Believe in You. He's got uh, Stephen Stills playing on here, along with Nils Lofgren. Who would later join the E Street Band? They're they're on the album playing uh, in the background. So great song. Got a nice little uh, gatefold here with Neil nice. chilling. Uh, really enjoyable album. Yeah, and, uh, I wanted to represent Neil Young at this time and put him on the list. So he's at number seven. Yeah, I think you know for a lot of people, me included, of my sort of age, I think his music and Joni Mitchell's music and Crosby Stills, Nash and Young's music being taken off Spotify is a big, is a big thing oh, for, you know, people my age discovering him. Um, it's a shame because he has a body of work that's almost second to none. You know, the yeah. number of albums he's put out rivals Dylan and Van Morrison and some of these guys who put out 40, 50 albums. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I could... investigating that body of work and, 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 because he he changes it up. Not every album's the same. In fact, very few are. The he's good at uh, reinventing himself. So. I think I think for me with after the gold rush, um, which we will get to later for my for my list, um, 
I think that was the album where his vocals were the, the most sort of challenging for me to get into. But I, I gave it some time. I took some time away. I listened to it again. Oh, still not there. And then I came back. And then eventually yeah. I went to really, because the songwriting is incredible on that album. First rate, yeah. My number six is something a bit different for me. And um, I find with music, sometimes there are genres, like with you, I love Americana and singer songwriter. And I love the sort of pop side of, of things as well at this time. Mm-hmm. But sometimes genre goes out the window when you listen to something that is so good i'm not a metal guy but paranoid by black sabbath is an all-time classic album um the title track obviously iron man the the big famous songs but war pigs is just an incredible song um and honestly it's not really my kind of music at all but when i first listened to it i was like yeah this is this is special right here this is some real good stuff. Um, it's really well produced. Ozzy Osbourne obviously is, an, is a great vocalist, so powerful. Um, so much energy on the album. Again, the playing, um, Tommy Iommi on guitar is just just amazing. Again, some of the riffs, so memorable. And not only are they memorable, but they're impressive as well. You know, um, a lot of cool grooves on here. It's quite eclectic for a metal album as well. You've got some more psychedelic stuff on there, some slower stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't think many people are going to argue with Paranoid on the list. Even as, and as someone who doesn't even like metal music, I just had to. I thought it was it's a brilliant yeah. thing. Well, it won't be on my list, but I know I have 10 or 12 really good friends in the BC, and it would be on all of their lists. They, yeah. that's, they love the album. They love Black Sabbath. But they're they're more of the hard edge stuff than I am, and I respect that because, uh, you know, they did it better than anybody else pretty much. Uh, my number six is Cat Stevens, T for the Tillerman. Another one of these uh, albums that was the forefront of the singer-songwriter movement. You know, you had James Taylor, Joni Mitchell, Neil, you had Cat, Elton, all these guys and girls came out at the same time in the early 70s and just led that wave of music. And I happened to be a teenager at that time. Uh, 13, 14, 15 years old, and I ate that stuff up. And it, it's still important to me to this day. It's the kind of music that uh, I vibe to the most, uh, with some exceptions. I mean, I, I can rock a little bit harder, but I love uh, Cat's songwriting, his his mellow uh, playing. I mean, it, every, it, you can hear the instruments clearly. It's well produced. Uh, Where the Children Play, Wild World. Even a song like Miles from Nowhere, I like the way that his voice is kind of gravelly on that. Uh, the big hit for me, or the big song, is Father and Son, which is one of my favorite songs of all time. Uh, any year, any genre, uh, it's just so meaningful. Uh, if you have a relationship with your father and you know, there's going to be disagreements along the way and you're just not going to see eye to eye, that song really hits home. Um, and Cat Stevens, the way he writ, he wrote it, and the way he sings it, he does both voices, a counterpoint, where they're trying to communicate with each other and see some meet somewhere in the middle. It's it's fantastic songwriting, great performance, and uh, I'm a big Cat Stevens fan. In fact, the album after this, Teaser and a Fire Cat, is my favorite, and this would be number two mm. in the Cat Stevens catalog, of course. Yeah, I mean, um, and I, you know, a note on what you were saying about how you were discovering these artists. Obviously, it's it's cool that we're both sort of talking about the same kind of music, and obviously, you've sort of lived through it all, and I've right. go back and sort of yeah. discover it. I myself. like that dynamic though, where you know I'm living through it, and I like when young guys like you and you mentioned Sam St. John. He's similar. He he goes back and reaches for these and picks them out, and mm. and just the material you vibe with. It doesn't matter when you grew up or how you were raised, what country you're in. Good music's good music. Great songwriting's great songwriting. And you have to seek it out, find it, and uh, it becomes part of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. Um, my number five is an album that I mentioned at the start of the of the video. And um, yeah, we're getting to the top five. The real heavy hitters, all time good albums now. You know, I, yeah. I, splitting these is so difficult. Um, but my number five is going to be George Harrison with All Things Must Pass. Um, another one, much like Led Zeppelin three, most people's lists are going to have this somewhere in the top 10. Um, 
it's incredible that an album that is so long, I mean, the White Album is my favourite Beatles album, but even I can admit that All Things Must Pass, in terms of consistency, is so much more consistent in its track list than the White Album, where almost every song could be a single, which is insane to me, um, the level of output. I, of course, he'd been sort of storing them over the years because he wasn't right. able to have as many on the Beatles albums as he wanted. But, um, I mean, the title track, All Things Must Pass, is probably my favourite George Harrison solo song. I think it's just so moving. My Sweet Lord, obviously. What is life? Isn't it a pity? Uh, just Beware of Darkness. Just remembering all these songs. Now I want to listen to the album again. And it's so it's such a long album, but it flows so well from track to track. And it's sort of, yeah, it, I mean, it's kind of interesting that, he released this album in 1970 and it's almost universally agreed to be the best Beatles solo album. And he released it, you know, when they'd barely broken up yet, you know, <laughs> and they had all those years it's to catch crazy, up. Yeah. And they just, right. I don't think any of it comes close. I mean, I love Paul's solo stuff, but all things must pass is in another, another league for me. So that's my number five, absolutely Titanic album. Yeah. It's going to appear on my list as well. I, I think it's fantastic. Uh, my number five is one that you had earlier. Cosmos Factory, mm. CCR. I think it's my favorite of album, uh, my favorite album of theirs. Of course, although Willie and the Poor Boys and Green River are right with it, the three of them together. I mean, are what a trifecta that is for uh, great music, successful chart success. You know that type of thing. All of them hits galore. Ramble Tamble. You mentioned that in particular. It opens up the album. It's a seven-minute song but it rocks it doesn't feel like seven minutes it just the instrumentation is first rate um it's a surprise because it wasn't really a hit single but i like that about it it, it, it lays the foundation of the album um and then you run off these successful singles traveling band looking out my back door run through the jungle up around the bend who'll stop the rain long as i can see the light Heard it through the grapevine, their cover. Fantastic all the way through. Uh, John Fogarty, one of a kind voice. You know that you could say three words and you know it's John Fogarty. He has that, that Southern cadence, even though they were raised in California. Very bizarre, swamp rock music, whatever you want to call it. Americana, roots rock. Nobody does it better than CCR. I, I was lucky enough to see Fogarty twice in concert as a solo artist and uh, he still brings it. He's a great guitar player. That's the one thing I noticed about him was his mm. guitar playing on stage. He commands the stage. He's running back and forth. So much energy for an older person. He's older. He's like 12 years older than I. So I know he's old and uh, <laughs> he really brings it and the crowd loves it. I mean, the people my age, you know, 60 plus they're out there screaming their lungs out, singing every word of every song. Fantastic experience. And uh, it's a shame they weren't together longer because they had so much more to, to offer, but egos being egos and jealousies and yeah, disagreements, they just couldn't stay together more than what, five, five years, I guess it was. It wasn't very long. But yeah, I fantastic. mean, yeah, I'm not going to question that choice. I love it. I love that album so much. And in any other year, it would definitely crack a top five, but 1970 is just cut from different cloth. I think that year, something, something was in the water, I think. Um, so yeah. my my number four is going to be uh, from another classic artist. It's like we're bringing all of these classic artists up. You know, it's amazing that they were all releasing stuff at the same time. Uh, I'm going to go with Van Morrison, Moondance. Um, it's my second favourite Van Morrison album. I think I like St. Dominic's Preview the most, which is a bit of a hot take. But um, I, I, something about that album is amazing. And the fact that it beats up this album tells you how good that album is <laughs> because because Moondance has a track list for the ages, especially that A-side with oh uh, God, the title yeah. track and Into the Mystic, especially those songs. Just, uh, I love Caravan as well. That's a great song. Yep. There's uh, Van Morrison, um, I think now, obviously, similarly to Eric Clapton, I think there's definitely a sense that he's sort of lost a bit of respect because of the kind of person he is, you know, <laughs> in, in the public sphere. But I think the music speaks for itself. Um, you know, yeah. I think some of the songs are just, oh God. Yeah, Moondance might be one of my favorite songs of all time. Into the Mystic might be even better. 
you know um, the, the, the instrumentation on the album the arrangements are gorgeous his voice is so yeah commanding and like you say about john fogarty you hear three words out of van morrison's mouth you know who it is you know, you know it, he's another one you, mm. you know who it is immediately he has his own voice his own style nobody can replicate it he's mm. he's who he is because he's got the little the flares of jazziness as well we're yeah. not too much just a little bit that sort of it's all like Joni Mitchell, where it sort of uh, just adds a little bit more extra, something unique to the music. As a songwriter, as a lyricist, he's he's incredible as well. So, I mean, you don't really need me to tell you that Moondance by Van Morrison is good. I think pretty much everybody thinks that. But <laughs> it's, uh, it's another classic album from 1970, and it's not even making the top three. So it kind of shows you how stiff the competition is. Yeah, well, we'll see if it shows up in my top three or not. <laughs> 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 my uh, number four is John Lennon, Plastic Ono Band. I, you know, I was not really aware of this album until maybe five years ago. I mean, I was aware of it, but I didn't own it growing up. Uh, something told me I, I need to hear this album in full, and I'm glad I did. It's just brilliant. Uh, it's raw. It's uh, almost going to therapy the way he sings some of these songs. I mean, he's bearing his soul, laying it on the line. Uh, obviously, he was holding a lot in. I think during the success of the Beatles and riding that wave of fame and popularity, and then when he gets on his own, whatever he was holding in and whatever is troubling him comes out on that album. He's talking about his mother. Um, song called isolation working class hero is a great track uh, love god i mean he, he he's talking about every subject under the sun and doing it in a way where only john lennon can do it he you know he's throwing f-bombs he's using raw language he had been in primal screen therapy with his with his wife yoko ono and they were just you know screaming out supposedly at that time it was very in to do that to let all your hostilities out and this and that. And he kind of brings that method to this album. Yeah. Uh, you know, the song God, he's he's rejecting things in, in the world. He goes, I don't believe in Elvis. I don't believe in the Beatles. I don't believe in Kennedy. I don't believe in yoga. I don't believe in the Bible. He's just dumping and telling me what he doesn't believe in. And the mother song, yeah, his mom was killed when he was a teenager. She was hit by a car. Uh, she had abandoned him when he was five and he lived with his aunt so there's some kind of you know lost mother-child reunion or mother-child bonding that he needed he didn't get his mom was hit by a drunk driver I believe when John was in his teens and he lost her there and, and he's always crawl, calling out for uh, that motherly bond and uh, it's just an, it's, it, it's a strong album I'll put it that way. And I'm glad I, I finally caught up to it. I was probably in my late fifties when I first heard that all the way through, believe it or not. Mm. I had ignored it for years thinking, oh, I can't be that good. It, none, none of the songs were hits. Uh, you know, I, I tend to, I'm a pop guy myself. I liked a lot of the hits that John had. Uh, Imagine the mind games, you name it, whatever gets you through the night, instant karma, on and on and on. He had his share of hits. And of course, his last album, uh, Double Fantasy, was fantastic. But I went back and, and listened to this, and uh, it paid off. I'm really glad I did it. Number four on my list, so it's pretty strong. Yeah, I mean, you were saying, it's not made my list. Um, I, I, you were saying about sort of the rawness of it, and the song Mother, especially, the vocals on that song, is so, it's almost hard to listen to because you can feel the pain. The pain. Is, yeah. But even then, you know, even through all that pain, you've got songs that are so pleasing to the ear, like Working Class Hero and Isolation yeah. and Hold On. And, you know, it's right. not like the album was just completely rough around the edges. There's some really oh. musical stuff there as well. So, and that well, 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 he's singing, well, 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 you know, he's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not for everybody, but somebody that likes to dig deep and, you know, exact, do self examination, I think would like this album. Mm. So I did mention that my top three, I'll be joining you on showing the albums that I own physically. <laughs> um, oh, very good. Uh, my number three is going to be an album that you've already shown. After the Gold Rush, Neil Young. Nice. Um, yeah. Same gatefold. <laughs> <laughs> I picked this up very recently um, and it was one that I knew I had to own because uh, yeah. 
God, yeah, you were right. The A side of this album, Tell Me Why, After the Gold Rush, Only Love Can Break Your Heart, Southern Man, Till the Morning Comes. Perfect. Five perfect songs, you know? Um, and then on the B side, you still got Oh Lonesome Me, Don't Let It Bring You Down. I really like Cripple Creek Ferry as well. Yep. There's sort of short one minute songs he has that, that just get lodged in my brain and I find myself Ooh. listening to them. Like, how did he do this? It's a minute long. How am I like, how is, yeah. am I enjoying this so much? Um, it feels so fleshed out. And the production on this album is amazing. Great guitar work, um, especially on Southern Man. Um, yeah. I like a lot of Neil Young, but this is my favorite. I think this is him at his sort of peak as a songwriter. Um, I think a lot of people would say sort of harvest. Some people would say on the beach, but for me, it's after the gold rush. Um, just as a, it's only about thirty minutes long, so it's not as though it's not like an all things must pass where you got to spend an afternoon to listen to it. Um, it's a, it's a lot more of a casual listen, you know, in terms of of length. Um, and yeah, the the songwriting, like you say, is amazing. I think after the gold rush is maybe his, his best written song. Um, yeah, you know, seeing Mother Nature on the run in the nineteen seventies. Perfect. Yeah. Love just uh, that line still still rings true today so lying in a burned out basement and all that stuff yeah, the image, yeah. The image it's, uh, it's just unbelievable i mean tell me why might be my favorite song on the album i think that's such a, a poignant beautiful song um but i mean there's so much choice um it's it's pretty much a perfect album and it's only my number three somehow because 1970 is that good <laughs> Yeah, it, it's probably in my top three, Neil Young. I like uh, Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere. I like oh, yeah. That, and I like Harvest as well. On the Beach, to me, I need to listen to more. I do own it, mm. but it's not, uh, I don't know, I think it's in my top five. I like Comes a Time, a later album of his in 78, which is very good too, very acoustic and very... Everybody fun. Knows This Is Nowhere is a real good one. I should have mentioned that. Yeah, that's probably yeah, my... That's, that's, that vies with After the Gold Rush is my my top two i think those two yeah and they're only a year apart 69 and 70. uh my top three let's see what number three is one you mentioned all things must pass right i mean i couldn't leave it off just every song tremendous this album here is so beat up i bought this or was gifted to me in 1971 so it's 50 years old oh my God. Yeah. it's like an original uh, pressing box set. And like you said, every song on here, What Is Life is one that I always go back to. I just love that. Nee, 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 that guitar, you know, riff, My Sweet Lord. I like the song A Waiting On You All. Isn't it a pity? Uh, the title track, I mean, just one after the not, it, fantastic album. It, it's long, it, in fact, I think it's a three, a triple album here. It's yeah. three records. So that's six sides of music. Fantastic. And like you mentioned, I, you know, I'm repeating myself, but George had been storing up these songs. Uh, the Beatles were not, or Paul and John in particular, were not going to let him dominate the album. So he waited and waited and then unleashed this. And it's clearly to me the best solo Beatles album of any of them that includes john or paul i mean obviously paul had some nice ones uh, he might if you did a top 10 beatles solo albums paul might have six in the top 10 but he doesn't have the best one george does yeah and uh, that's just the way it is that's a fact you can look it up <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so my top two um again I think my number one kind of picked itself. So um, my number two, though, it was an album I've only discovered in the last year or so, but since then I've just been having it on repeat. Might be a bit of a surprise for people who haven't watched my channel much, but if you have, you might be seeing it coming because I did mention it in my 70s uh, albums video. Curtis by Curtis Mayfield. Oh, very nice. My favourite soul album of all time. Uh, really cool gate gatefold here. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. I mean, everybody knows "Move On Up." The da, 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 da. that's such a famous sort of horn part. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, man, it's eight tracks, and all eight of them are absolutely amazing. Um, "The Makings of You" is one of my favorite love songs of all time. "Miss Black America" is such a poignant track. "Give It Up" is just classic, sort of 
60s soul style um wild and free is amazing the other side of town and then you've got these longer jam tracks um don't worry if there's a hell below we're all gonna go um is one of them where you get some really great percussion works great bass works some great horns um if you're a fan of soul you have to check this album out because for me it beats anything by marvin gay anything by any of these classic soul artists so um yeah i think it's a very underrated because you know I think the Superfly album is probably his most famous one. The yeah, I think so. soundtrack. But I think this one is is head and shoulders better. It's just absolutely lush from start to finish. It's one of my favorite sounding albums ever. And um, yeah, I mean every time I get to talk about it, I just you know I try and force people to listen to it. So <laughs> that's my uh, that's my number two is Curtis by Curtis Mayfield. Very good. I, I wrote it down because I am not familiar with the album. I know of Curtis Mayfield, but it, I don't own it. So I wrote down Loaded, Sunflower, and Curtis. I'm going to check all three of them now. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, my number two. Different cover, but it's Deja Vu by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Right. This was the record store cover. They changed it up a bit. It's usually a brown album cover. Uh, of course, their debut came out in 69, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. They added Neil Young for this. Uh, again, nine songs or 10 songs, 10 songs. Eight of them are radio friendly classics. You hear them all the time, deservedly so. It leads off with Carry On, which is sort of up tempo. Then you got Teach Your Children, Graham Nash's uh, Beautiful song. iconic song. Crosby chips in with Almost Cut My Hair, a hippie anthem. You can see I never cut mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then Neil, helpless, you know, there is a town in North Ontario with that high voice. Helpless, helpless, great song. Uh, Woodstock, the Joni Mitchell song that she wrote, they did, made famous. They, were, they actually played Woodstock where Joni wrote it from the sidelines. Then you got Deja Vu. We have all been here before, kind of a, Another one of these vibey songs, Our House, the Joni, the Neil, excuse me, the Graham Nash song about he and Joni's relationship, living in the house. Great song. Four and 20, which is a Stephen Stills acoustic number, well done. And then the final couple songs, Country Girl and Everyone Says I Love You. I mean, I just love this album. Uh, I may prefer the, the uh, debut album a little bit better because it was... A monster when it came out, you know, who are these guys, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, all of a sudden they show up and they're, they're dominating the scene and then they come out with this album. Both albums are strong for me, but uh, this is going to fall at number two. That is, I was not expecting that album to end up so high, but um, I'm glad it did because I'm a big fan of Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Um, yeah, great stuff. I, I, I'm more familiar with the, with the first step with the album before. But um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to Deja Vu a bit more now that you've, that you've brought up because you just reading that track list reminds me, wow, that's just, yeah, <laughs> there's no filler in there. The first album is arguably better, but you know, you got Neil in here with a, a couple of his tunes as well. So Neil, you well, well on your list, two, two entries for Neil Young. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And uh, Beatles and two ex-Beatles. So I've got George, John and the Beatles themselves. So mm. Taking up half my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my number one, and I'm sure you know what's coming. I think anyone who knows me knows what's coming. This is a top 10, maybe a top five album of all time for me. It was one of the albums that really, you know, I listened to it for the first time. Whew, how long ago would it be now? Five years ago when I really got into music for the first time. And every single song is etched into my brain. I could sort of recite every note of this album. I've listened to it that much in that short amount of time. So in 30 years time, God knows how many times I've listened to this album. <laughs> Bridge Over Troubled Water. Oh yeah, I knew it was coming. Yeah, you told me, yep. Um, I mean, it is it is one of the great albums of all. I think it, it almost, again, I don't want to say it's underrated because I think a lot of people recognize it as a classic, but people don't hold it up to the same level as some of Dylan's best work and some of the Beatles' best work. For me, it is, it is right up there, you know, Bridge Over Trolled Water, Cecilia, Keep the Customer Satisfied is a personal favorite of mine. That's probably my favorite on the album. Um, the Boxer, Baby Driver, The Only Living Boy in New York, the cover of Bye Bye Love that then yeah. leads so nicely into Song for the Asking, which is just a perfect closer. 
you know, all the lyrics on the back here, which love that. Yep. You could just read them and not need the music and it would be brilliant poetry. But then the music is so good. The session musicians, the, the horns and, and the drums yeah. and, the, and the bass. Paul Simon is one of the great songwriters in my mind. Um, and it was never better when he was in Simon and Garfunkel. Um, that run of the first album's okay, but then albums two through five are just all yeah. top notch stuff. Um, and for me, there was no other choice. Um, the fact that all these songs are, you know, like I said, the lyrics are like poetry, but the songs are, it's, it's sort of like pop folk, you know, they're so catchy and so memorable. Um, the harmonies obviously are incredible. Uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water, the title track, uh, Art sings solo with Paul on the piano. One of the most beautiful vocal performances ever. Um, no doubt. But yeah, for me, yeah, it's songs like Keep the Customer Satisfied and The Boxer and The Only Living Boy in New York, which I will take to my grave. Those are just some of the greatest songs of all time. So The, bo the Boxer is my favorite from that album, although the vocal performance by Garfunkel on Bridge Over Troubled Water mm -hmm. is just angelic through the roof it, it you know you can't say enough glowing things about it it's that perfect yeah and uh i i said on the live stream either last night or the night before that i did not own bridge on over troubled water but guess what i do in a box set form all five albums are in this box set okay and uh you get all five on three cds there's the cover Oh, nice. Yeah. And the lyrics are here. It just missed my list because I didn't want to redo my list over after I had numbered it, but it, it's worthy of being anywhere on a, a top 10 list. My number one is one you mentioned, and it, it'll always be my favorite album from 1970, and that is Moon Dance. I absolutely love this album, everything about it. Uh, Van, Van Morrison, what can I say? The voice of the he just brings it, you know, and, and the songwriting uh, from Stone Me, Moon Dance, Crazy Love, Caravan, Into the Mystic. That side one is killer. And side two is not bad either with Come Running, These Dreams of You, Brand New Day, Everyone and Glad Tidings. Those are really good songs on side two. When you put them together, my goodness, this is an out. Look at Van on the back. Look how young he is. Just... Uh, a bad boy underneath all that uh, blonde hair, red hair, whatever he's got. I just think it's a great album. The jazz thing, the, the beginning with Moondance, you know, iconic, just absolutely stunning. Uh, my favorite song on there is Into the Mystic. Uh, it's going to be uh, the song I went played at my funeral. <laughs> I've said that before. I'll say it again. It's just, yeah. it's such, it, you can see somebody floating away into the mystic. It's so spiritual and I, I just love it love everything about it yeah i mean it was my number four so and it was it could have been as high as two but uh, you know i i can't it's an amazing choice uh it's that and saint dominic's preview i say saint dominic's preview is my favorite they're both sort of neck and neck for me i like saint dominic's preview too to me it doesn't have as many great songs but it's loaded mm. and i also like astral weeks i know it's yeah a popular take for uh, critics to like that, but it is a tremendous album. You you put that on and just listen to how one song flows into the next, and it's it's brilliantly uh, conceived. And uh, you don't even have to be a jazz lover because I'm not to to enjoy that album. No. I mean you know? songs like uh, the way young lovers do, and and the title track and sweet thing. You know, come on. I know all the way through. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, it's been it's been great. We've run a lot longer than I expected, but that's a good thing. You know, we've managed to really get some good discussion out of this. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll run through. I've got three main honorable mentions. Two of them you actually mentioned, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. Tea for the Tillerman by Cat Stevens. Uh, like you, I do prefer Teaser and the Fire Cat, but it's still great stuff. Um, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned Miles from Nowhere because that's great, amazing song. Father and Son is an all timer. Mm -hmm. um, I also had Ladies of the Canyon by Joni Mitchell, Just Missing Out, which you also cool. mentioned. Not my favourite Joni, but to me, she's, you know, one of the great songwriters. So any of her albums are going to be worth a listen. So um, it's a really great one. Just missed. 
And then from my all time favorite artist, it's very rare you'll find a list that this guy does not make it, but it's 1970, so it's tough. David Bowie, Man Who Sold the World. Um, fantastic, heavy rock album. Um, definitely the heaviest thing he ever did in terms of yeah. you know, really thick bass, really distorted guitars. Um, so yeah, Man Who Sold the World also just missed out. But um, I'm happy with my list. I, I, I wouldn't make any changes. I'm, I'm not feeling, I feel good about it. <laughs> Yeah, the, the one that came the closest to making my list was Bridge Over Troubled Water. When I found it, I said, eh, I'm going to leave it out because I, I figured you would have it in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Led Zeppelin III, of course, is an honorable mention, as was Layla, Derek and the Dominoes, uh, American Beauty by Grateful Dead, another one that is in that second tier, mm -hmm. just didn't uh, cut it. Same with Sweet Baby James. I like James Taylor's early work, but it's not at the same level with some of the albums that I, I put on, in my opinion. And the same thing with McCartney's uh, debut. It's just not top 10 material for me. Yeah, I mean, I would also add, yeah, Plastic Ono Band, uh, McCartney's debut, uh, American Beauty as well, like you mentioned. Yeah, there's just so much great stuff. Um, there's probably a load of stuff that neither of us mentioned. I'm going to get some comments saying, how could you not say this album? But, you know, it's 1970. It's... it's uh, to beat the dead horse, it is a absolutely monumental year. And for me, I've actually I think it's better than 1971 as a year for music. I mean, they're they're pretty they're pretty close, and they've both got some great albums. But for me, they're close. 1970 yeah. is the year. Another one for the harder rocking uh, crew out there. You've got Deep Purple and Rock, which I would never put on the list, but I know a lot of our hard rocking friends out there love it. Mm. Uh, Abraxas by uh, Santana is a great album. Yeah. And so is Chicago too. Their second, that silver cover, fantastic album. Yeah, but, uh, they didn't make it. Yeah, I mean it's tough, man. It's when you've only got ten for such a loaded year. You know, like we were saying, we could do a top fifty each. Um, but no, I've really enjoyed this. Uh, I think we both had some good lists there. Uh, see if the commenters agree. <laughs> um, so. And uh, yeah, I'd like to do this again sometime. Maybe we could go back to 69 or go to 71, 72, 73, something like that. Um, it's always cool Sounds to good. go back and look at, you know, a year as a whole, because sometimes it sort of recontextualizes things. Because like you said, you know, the, the Joni Mitchell song that she wrote, which appears on her album and on the Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young album, right. three Beatles mm -hmm. solo albums, you know, it's how everything is sort of connected, especially in this time of music is part of what makes it so interesting with the Laurel Canyon stuff and all that. So, yeah. yeah. Um, God, I'm you. glad to come back. You just let me know what you want to do and uh, be glad to do it again. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it'd be great to do something on your channel as well. That'd be, that'd be awesome uh, at some yeah. point. Yeah. Maybe we can line up something uh, for you and Sam and I project or something. We'll do something. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd be, I'd be super up for that. So yeah, if you're not sub to Rich, which you should be, uh, his link will be in the description um and yeah i mean for now thanks for watching and uh see you soon <laughs>